So what have we been talking about this month? Courage. 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 So up on this stage, we've been kind of showing our talents off, right? Yeah. We've got some of the best dance moves we've seen no. so far. Wait, who wants to give me who wants to give me one one of the best dance moves real quick? Go. Show. Come on, Joe, Joe, show me one. What, what about here? Vic? Come on, Vic. Come on, Vic. Here we go. Here we go. Best dance move. Here we go. What? 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 All right, who else? Chase? Here we go. Watch Chase. Here we go. Well, oh! Throw back. Throw back. Tanya? You ain't got it. I'm a rapper. You're, oh, you're a rapper. That's I'm funny. You missed that. Go. Show, okay? Here we go. Come on now. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Oh. 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 You got a two-liner right? Real quick, go, go, go. Fantastic. 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 That's a rap name. So look, I'm gonna I'll write a little rap right quick, okay? Y'all ready? Oh no, no. There we go. Alright, here we go, here we go. You gotta sing it in the microphone. I'm gonna sing it. Y'all ready? No. Here we go. No, no. terrible. No. <laughs> We're in a room full of kids, pre-teenage. Fear is not a problem as they break the stage. But today we ask leaders to read from the page. Go toe-to-toe -to -toe in a rap battle cave. Yes. Sing out Tanya. Chase. How many more do Oh, 
that thought Zeb rock the mic tonight. Let's hear it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Right? 
It's hard to be positive when everyone else is being negative. So, why should you? Like, why should you be positive? Why should you be brave when everyone else is being scared? Well, we have a story, as always, and I need you all to talk real quick. I wasn't here last week, so I didn't hear what we talked about. Can somebody tell me what we talked about last week? Okay. Uh, yes. So I forgot. I was here last week. Hey. When the Israelites escaped Egypt. Israelites escaped Egypt. What happened? The Red Sea parted. Red Sea parted. Oh, yeah, that was, that was a rough for Pharaoh, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a rough time. So after the Red Sea parted, um, God held the Red Sea open, they walked on dry land, chariots got stuck, waves smashed in, yeah, okay. So, today, we're talking about what happened when the Israelites got to the Promised Land. So you remember, Moses tells the people, like, God has a plan for you, right, we're going to go, we're going to flee being slaves, right, we're going to stop being slaves, we're going to go to the Promised Land, right? So they go, and they get right there on the edge, right? Kind of like a border, like between, you know, Georgia and Alabama, right? There's a border. Um, and they go up to it, and they're like, well, first, we got to spy this out, right? we got to figure out what's happening here so that we know what's going to happen when we go in. So he got 12 spies, and I need 12 volunteers. Whee! All right. You. You're Shanoa. Come on up, Shanoa. Everybody say hi, Shanoa. Hi, Shanoa. These are hard names to pronounce. You're going to have a little team. Um... Up here, your Shafat. Everybody say, hey, Shafat. Hey, Shafat. Hold on, Shafat. Mary Ashton. Ashton, everyone, is Caleb. Hey, Caleb. You don't to remember who you were, okay? Who were you? Nah, nah, I can't even say either. You're okay. Um, Hudson, Miguel, Caden, Joshua. Yeah, I got a name. Haley, Palti. Everybody say, hey, to Miguel, Joshua, and Palti. Hey, whatever you got today, good job. Good job, good job. JJ, you can be Gaddyo. Um, Carson, you can be Gaddy. Um, you can be Anio. Say hey, Gaddyo, Gaddy, Anio. Hey, Gaddy, Gaddy. Awesome. Taylor, you can be Sethor. Tyler, you can be Abby. Haley, you can be Gabby. Say hi, Sethor, Abby, and Gabby. So these are our awesome group of spies whose names are really hard to pronounce, right? So, okay, you're Caleb. You get the easy one asking. We get it, okay? All right. The spies have to go out into the promised land. So spies, go to the promised land that's back there. And so our spies were back in the promised land, right? Not in the Gaga Ball pit. Because the spies have to be mobile. And the spies went to go check out the land and how awesome it was. And they went that way, over there. Yep, y'all are doing great. Great job, spies. And the spies looked around and they saw a land. It was called, they described it as flowy with milk and honey. It had tons of good stuff. Tons of cows and animals and all sorts of stuff. And then they went this way all the way over here and they checked out all sorts of fruits and vegetables. And they said there were huge vines of grapes and they could have all the grapes and fruit they wanted. But then they climbed up to the mountain, which is the Ganga Ball Hit, and they peered over the land. And over that land was huge cities with massive walls, and not just massive walls, but massive people. These people were like giants, so they had giant walls and giant people, and they got scared and hightailed all the way back to the border, so they all came back, they all came back. Oh, they were all scared, they were terrified, they were people up. All right, so they all ran back. And the spies got every one of the Israelites together and they had a full assembly. And they gave a thumbs up. They gave a nice thumbs up to the land. The land was great, awesome, awesome. They gave a thumbs up to all the food and delicious things there. It's awesome, awesome. They gave a big fat thumbs down to the stuff, except two people Caleb and Joshua. 
So Caleb and Joshua said, no, it's good. They gave thumbs up to all three because they trusted that God would deliver them, right? All right, thank you so much, guys. Y'all can go back and take a seat. Y'all are wonderful, wonderful, right? Perimeter was secure. Perimeter was secure. Except it wasn't. There were, there were people, right? So there's two people, right? Caleb, Joshua weren't scared. So Numbers 13, 30 right here, it says literally, then Caleb interrupted the men who were speaking to Moses. He said, we should go up and take the land. We can certainly do it. Right? So Caleb was confident, right? Now do you think Caleb was confident because he thought he was strong enough to do it? No. Or he thought the Israelites could take on giants? No. Now, who do you think that Caleb was the one? God. God. Correct. Right? So the Israelites were still afraid. They were so afraid that they said, let's just go back to Egypt and be slaves again. Like, can you believe that? They were so afraid that they literally wanted to just go back to Egypt and be slaves or die of starvation in the wilderness. Okay, that's how scared they were. They were like shaking in their boots at the thought. And you know why? Because 10 of those spies were scared. Because 10 people were scared, an entire nation of people were terrified and didn't trust God. But Joshua joined Caleb too, right? In Numbers 14, verse 7, it says, they spoke to the whole community of Israel. They said, we passed through the land and checked it out. It was very good. If the Lord pleases with us, he'll lead us into that land. It's a land that has plenty of milk and honey. He'll give it to us. But don't refuse to obey him. And don't be afraid of the people of the land. We will swallow them up. The Lord is with us. So nothing can save them. Don't be afraid of them. So Joshua was also there with them. Joshua and Caleb both trying to encourage people because they trusted in the Lord, right? But the people still didn't trust him. They were still afraid. So God told them that no one was going to see the promised land except Caleb and Joshua who trusted. He said all of the other adults, because they were afraid, they wouldn't get to see it. They missed out the part. Guys, what was the name of the land they were going to? The promised land. It wasn't the, hey, maybe you'll get this land, or the, ooh, if you're lucky, you'll get to it land. No, it's the promised land, because God promised it to them, and they didn't believe God's promise. So Caleb and Joshua were the only one who were promised to see the promised land. That's all because they were afraid. But what's crazy, guys, is the Israelites already saw God's legs, right? Like, they saw him literally stop a river, like a huge sea, and just part it in half like it was nothing, right? He freed them. They saw all of the plagues. They saw all of the miracles God did. He defeated the Egyptians that were chasing him. But the moment something else scary came up, they were scared, right? They'd seen everything, but they were scared, right? It's as if they had just forgotten what God could do. But Caleb and Joshua remember, right? They knew and they trusted, right? Even if it was unpopular, even if everyone else was afraid, they were courageous enough to do it. You know who else did that? Jesus. Back in Jesus' time, everybody thought that the only way to get to heaven was to follow rules, right? All you had to do, there's literally books of the Bible that are rules that they had to follow, right? And that's how they thought they got to God, right? Because they could do it themselves. But Jesus came in and said, no, they can't. It was only him who could save them, and that was crazy, right? No one believed him. That was crazy. They had had these laws for thousands of years. How could Jesus come and say it was different? But it was through him that we get to heaven, right? And then later, the disciples did the same thing. Not everyone was a fan of Jesus, right? And not everyone liked the message. Maybe they were kings and they didn't want to bow down to another king, or they just thought it was weird. But the apostles like Paul and Peter and all of them, they had to deal with a lot of people not liking what they did. But they stuck to it, even when they were scared, even when they were thrown into jail, or people said that they would kill them. They continued. So despite their fears and what bad had happened and all the scary things, right? They trusted in God, and they trusted in Jesus, even when it was hard, right? So, 
Throughout it all, they trusted. And so can we, right? It's our responsibility. We're Christians. We're called. If we believe in Jesus, to stand up for what's right. If you have a friend who's being bullied, stand up for that. Maybe your friends are the ones doing the bullying. Right? Your friends have said these things before. Everyone does it. It's just kind of what happens in school or wherever we are. And maybe it's your turn to stand up and say, let's not do that. And it's really hard. It's really hard when everyone else is making fun of everyone to say, no, let's not. But God calls us to do it. He says to be a better person because of him. So we need to do that, right, guys? <clears throat> Maybe it is a sports team that you're scared of. You can rally your team to go beat them. Maybe it's a hard class and no one's doing well in it. You can encourage people. Whatever it is, being the odd man out isn't always the worst, right? For Caleb and Joshua, they got to see the promised land because they were the odd man out. And no one else did, right? So don't be afraid, right? Have courage. Trust in God, right? Be brave. So we're going to go to worship after this, but we have a question. I want you to think about this. It's how can you be brave when everyone else is afraid? What can you do? Who can you turn to? Is there a Bible verse? Whatever it is, just think about that. Think about it, okay? We're going to pray, and then we're going to go into worship. Are you ready? God, thank you so much that you give us courage even when we're afraid, even when it's hard, even when there's really big obstacles in the way, Lord. I pray that you um, just show us where you want us to go and what you want us to do. And Lord, let us have a great week um, being courageous and bold for you. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen.